All right, Lisa, tell us a little bit about you and then we'll get we'll get this party started. We've got we've got quite a few people on watching. Sure. Um, so I'm a licensed agent, but my main thing is back house um, and I do transaction management. So I have a, a transaction coordinating company, Simply Closed, but uh, right now I'm an in-house transaction coordinator for Madison Fine Properties uh, down there in East Downtown. And I've been doing this for about nine years. And really, I just love systems and I just love follow up boss. So I kind of integrated transaction management with follow up boss because I just thought it was the best thing in the world. Oh, I love that. I love that a lot. And we've got a few more people from Texas. Paul, Dallas, Rose is from Plano. And Paul, Paul's from uh, Dallas, Texas. We got you, Paul. All right. So, Lisa, tell us how you've been able to integrate with Follow Up Boss, because what I found is that I don't know very many people that are using it as a transaction tool. And that that's pretty cool. I want to see the back end of this. Where do <laughs> Where do we start if we want to duplicate what you've done? Um, first thing I'd have to say, I mean, you really got to know follow-up boss, right? So if you haven't been using it as an agent uh, or even just as an office person, um, you know, that's where I would kind of start with it. But first thing you want to do is kind of think through your transaction contract process. Every state is different. I'm in a lot of transaction coordinating groups on Facebook, uh, which I'll be happy to share if anybody's interested, but we talk about this all the time. What are the best systems? There's so many different tools out there. And so you want to kind of customize follow-up boss to your own liking and how you do the transaction co coordinating process. Uh, some people have VAs. Some people do the whole thing. I do everything from beginning to end on my own. Um, so I I've taken the custom fields, uh, the deals into it, the files, and basically done everything in one since I didn't want to go to multiple different systems. But I'm starting to now play with a couple of integrations, which we can talk about at the end with real scale and also with open to close as well to kind of help me with the process. Mm, I definitely want to get into that. All right, let's start with, I'm assuming we would start with creating custom fields so people understand what you're doing. Yeah. So feel free to share your screen. Let me know if you can or can't. I'm going to make you co-host either way. See, I do not have access yet. And there you go. There if we go. that doesn't work, let me know. Okay, let's see. And then Rui okay. is also from Houston, Texas. Rui, what's up? Awesome. <laughs> love it, love it. Uh, let's see. Can you see my screen? I can. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what's up here. Okay, sounds good. Um, so I pretended Brad Pitt is my client and he is in here. <laughs> And he's still, yeah, and he's still married to Jennifer Aniston. So we're going to have that relationship in there. So I won't go through the basics there. Um, you can take some more follow boss webinars to go ahead and do that. But mm -hmm. basically, I haven't been as the lead and it's assigned to me as the agent, but I'm going to go ahead and assign this to my broker. So I'm going to do that. And this is a custom fields part that I, we were talking about. So I have them kind of shorthanded because I found that sometimes it doesn't give you the full label. So you'll want to kind of maybe shorthand or make it a little shorter than mine. It doesn't bother me too much because I use this every single day. So I know exactly where my fields are, but everything for LC stands for my listing coordinator. So they'll be the one to enter all that data. But here starting from TC down is all my fields that I need for my contract. So basic Whoa. things, yeah. So like I'll have the seller's name. If it's a company name, I'll put it in there. If there's a buyer name, I'll put it exactly like the contract. And if I'm working with a tenant or landlord, it's in there. I'll have my co-broker information here. So Jennifer Aniston is also not only his wife, but his broker. Um, so <laughs> she's in there with her email phone number. Title company, Courtney Cox. Um, I was watching Friends this weekend. So. <laughs> <laughs> So Courtney Cox is in there as their title officer, um, her company name, her address, same thing. So same thing with your lender. If you have one, I'll go ahead and put that information there. If it doesn't exist, I'll just put NA or I'll just put none there. So here I'll put the MLS number. That way I need to reference it if I need to later on. The contract price, whatever it's selling for, they're buying 123 Main Street for 900,000. And then I've got the property address. Uh, the full address in here. This was going to be probably your key factor because this is going to go on all my automated emails when I send them out for transaction coordinating. Wow, you just populated with that tag or with that a field with a custom field. Yeah, that's so, so cool. Yeah, so I'll just go in and fill in a couple other different things. Let's say they go under contract today. Um, sorry, actually, this is a closing date. So let's say they're closing end of the year. 
They went on a contract today, the executed date. Uh, for us in the state of Texas, we have earnest money. So let's say they put $1,000 down. Mm -hmm. It's going to be due on the 1st. Uh, I have an option fee maybe for $100. My option period will end. Now, this one, you want to think about if you want um, a date field or if you want a text field. And I went back and forth with this for a little bit. I kept it as a text field because sometimes I don't have an actual date. So I can't do one or the other. So I just left it as a text field. So let's say I have an option period for this one. And let's say this is on the second. Got it. I have a question for you on this. Mm -hmm. do, the, do the numbers coincide with the contract or is that just numbers? They do. Yeah, I'll usually have my dual screen up. So I highly recommend a 27 inch monitor or dual screens um, and it'll make your life a lot easier. I'll have half a follow boss up and I'll have my contract up on the other half of my screen. That's cool. Or, or you could just get a 60 inch screen. I mean, that would be- That nice. works too. <laughs> Let's see. And then I'll do no seller concessions, title commitment. So a lot of, um, when I was working for other TC companies and other uh, brokers, it was mm -hmm. manually uh, trying to calculate those dates. So one tip that I use is uh, timeanddate.com. Uh, if you never used it before, it's a great tool. Okay. So in here, I'll put my date as today. Let's say it's um, executed today. And then it's 20 days for me to get a title commitment, usually here in Texas. I'll do calculate a new date and it'll automatically spit out my date for me. I like that. Easy. Time and date. Look at that. So we'll do that. So December 19th is going to be my date for my title commitment. I will put that in here. My financing type, I have it as a drop down field. So most of the time it's going to be an FHA or conventional loan. So I'll have mm -hmm. that in there. Uh, financing contingency date. Now, tip is if you do make your fields really long, uh, like mm -hmm. I do, you can just hover your mouse over it and it'll give you the full name. So this one's mm -hmm. my financing contingency due date. Normally it takes 21 days. So I'll just type in 21, calculate the date, and it tells me December 20th. So I'll go back here, do the 20th. And let's say they're financing out of the 900,000, they're buying, they're financing 800,000 of it. Okay. If I have a due date, I can put it in there. Um, I don't have an appraisal due date because I just got the contract today. If I've got the HOA company, sometimes I'll put it in here as well. Sometimes my um, client will want to know the HOA name and company, so I'll put it in there. Let's just mm -hmm. say this doesn't have one. So I'll put no homeowners association. So new date, new, no due date for that. We usually okay. have utility districts. So if it's not in one, I'll just put none. If there is one, I'll put in the date. Cool. And then survey due date, again, is calculated based on the um, day that it's due. So let's say it's due three days from now. So I could go mm -hmm. back in here, my time and date field, calculate it for three days from now, and it'll be December 2nd. Boom. So there we go. And then this is my favorite, my missing docs, because that's the number one thing most transaction coordinators are trying to hunt down. Yeah. And so a lot of times I'll go through my compliance and I'll see that I'm missing like a, you know, seller's disclosure. So I'll put that in there if I'm missing that. Basically, I'll just do a long list of things that I'm missing and it'll save it in here, home inspection report. Lisa, yeah, are you the one? Are you the one that's in charge of this, or do you have do you have a team that helps you with this? It's me right now, but when I was doing it for a couple of other of my brokers and agents, because um, I have a TC company, I have a virtual assistant that I hired through VirtuDesk. Uh, thank you, follow boss. So um, he's part time with me, and it's been great. Uh, he helps me with a lot of this data entry. Right now, I'm doing it by myself, um, but I do have him still for social media content. Uh, updating a couple other, you know, backend data things or uploading my documents and my to my compliance, like back agent or SkySlope. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. All right. So basically, that's the first thing I'm going to do is do all my custom fields and enter it in. So okay. first thing that anybody will show you is once you've done that, you want an action plan. So. Yeah. I've got my folders for every single type of buyer. We normally handle with four different types in residential. So buyer, seller, landlord, tenant. And I have it broken down by the type of transaction, if you're doing resale or new home, and then the type of financing, because that'll kind of give me my checklist that I'm needing. 
So okay. nine times out of 10, I'm doing a buyer resale third-party financing. Cool. And then I usually always start with this, is the buyer resale option pending, and it's a third-party financing. Um, sometimes if they don't have an option period, I'll just skip to the next phase, which is the pending. So this is going to be really important based on how your operations run or your state and different phases of your contract. You'll want to build out that action plan for every phase. Because I found that a lot of times, you know, the contract will fall through during option period and you got to restart all over. So mm -hmm. you can reapply your action plan as many times as you'd like to until you finally get to the closing stage. So I'm going to activate this plan and it's going to give me all of my tasks that should come out. Sometimes you'll need a refresh, but give it a second and there it is. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So basically I numbered my task. So I know which order to go in. Uh, unfortunately, it puts the one in front. So number two is going to be at the very bottom of all of these. But your first thing is going to do is it's going to tell you to add all your custom fields to your contract from your email. And mm -hmm. that's what we've done over here. So I'm going to click cool. done on that. Done. Skip all the way down to number two. This is really important for a lot of my um, brokers and my agents. They're going to want those uh, custom fields as added as appointments to the section. So what I'll normally do here is I will copy the address. And then I will go to my appointment section and I'll put in my three key main dates that they want on their calendar. So normally I'll just put option period ends. I'll copy the street. And then for us, for transaction coordinators, we like to know who the buyer and seller is on both sides. Yeah. So we'll put Brad Pitt, Jennifer Aniston to Angelina Jolie because they got to liquidate their house and sell it. Makes, makes total sense. <laughs> yeah. And then based off of my custom fields over here, I'll select the date that, you know, my option period is ending. And then the great thing about here is you can send out the invite. So you can send out to Brad. You can send it out to, um, like, who's he married to now? Jennifer Aniston. So she's in there. And then I'll normally copy my agent as well. Nice. And then I'll send the invite and the reminder. I'm not going to do it now, but um, yeah, I would do that for option period. I would do it for the tentative closing date. So they'll have it on their calendar and I'll use this all day function because it'll stick to the top of their Google calendar or outlook. And that That's way they won't. So good. Yeah. They won't forget it. So we'll go on to the next one. Um, let me see. Option number three, I'll send an intro letter. So this one also is really important as well. Uh, just to introduce all parties. So I'll just go ahead and send an email. I'll take out my client's name because I'm not sending it to Brad, mm -hmm. but I will copy all the people involved. So this is my co-agent. This one here is my title company. And this one here is my lender. I will copy my owner broker or agent on it. I would go to my templates and these are email templates I've already set up. So let's say I'm working with the buyer. I can either search for it or I usually look for a uh, particular, you know, uh, labeling. So I have it broken down here and it's going to be this one that I normally use, the buyer resale, intro to email, and it's to title, lender, and the co-op agent. Once I've done that, literally my intro email is all filled out for me based on my custom fields. Ooh, easy. Yeah. So I don't like the way this looks. I normally change it because um, it normally follow up boss has the uh, Monday or Tuesday date. It's the way it's formatted. So I normally just redo these, but it's up to you. Um, if you like the way that, it, you know, it looks, you can leave it the way it is. And here I'll have my team members. So I would normally put my buyer's agent. I'll have my merge field for my assigned agent. I'll have this as a static email because I'm the only transaction coordinator for our office. So this will never change. But if you had multiple, you could actually rotate them out with merge fields as well. Okay. Um, listing agent, this pulled in with my custom fields. My lender is David Schwimmer from Friends. So he's in there. <laughs> Title company, that's pulled in there. And very basic stuff. At the end of all my email correspondence, I usually put the buyer's agent that I'm working with and the transaction coordinator so they can always easily email us back. That's so cool. Yeah. 
So uh, that's for a majority of the checklist. Um, I know we were like halfway through the time, but I would go through and whatever your checklist is that you're doing with your TC, uh, whether it's in Excel or if you have it, you know, in a PDF form, uh, those paper files and those checklists basically now go into Follow a Boss. And this is what uh, I train the TCs on how to use Follow a Boss. Nice. That's that's pretty extent. I didn't even know. I mean, I never thought of this. So this is this is pretty amazing, Lisa. I love this. So then once we're done, once we're done with this, let's say we took the time to do this and, and fully execute on it. You will also have smart lists for milestones and, and critical dates. So let's go into those so you can blow more minds because. <laughs> I know what's happening right now. Everybody's like, can we just hire you? Because this is very, very deep. Yes, it's, it's very deep. It's taken me many years to build it, but um, it takes a little bit of time with the custom fields and emails. But if you can automate and digitize everything and follow a boss, it will save you a lot of time in the future. So um, we'll just jump into smart list. Um, basically, I have a whole bunch for my agents. But this is specifically for me. Um, I do it based off of phases in my contract. I don't do it based off of milestones, but you possibly could. Uh, if you wanted a smart list for just appraisals that are due today, and you go through your list of people that day just to follow up on appraisals, um, David Breckheimer has a really good focus on, you know, just your task and task batching. So that's what sometimes I'll do, but I'm still on a very task-based um, system versus a virtual whiteboard. So most transaction coordinators, if you've been doing that for a while, there's two different types of systems. So I'm still very task-based. I'll still go to my tasks every single day, but I'll use these milestones to kind of keep me in track. So I'll log in in the morning. I'll look at anything that's option pending. And okay. then I'll just little start with my first list and then go on, go on to my task here, clear them out, and then go on to my second, third, fourth person. And then again, go back to my next list. Okay, those were option pending. I gotta make sure inspections are ordered. I gotta make sure that they're on track. Um, and then here for the pending phase, I know I'm out of option period. I gotta order the appraisal or make sure it's back. Do we have it clear to close? So then I'm fully focused on my task and breaking them up just as like an agent would focus on, hey, these are my new leads today or these are you know people I need to follow up once a month. I'm kind of breaking up the same process for the transaction coordinator. I never thought to use follow up boss for TC work. This is amazing. I I love the smart, this is this is awesome, Lisa. I, 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 I'm speechless. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, David has a question, and you may answer this a little closer towards the end, but um, <laughs> Adrian, that's funny. Thanks for walking us through this. I'm curious if you're using SkySlope and or OTC. Why use FUB in this capacity as well? So I am not using SkySlope. We're using BackAgent. My last three offices have, and it doesn't integrate but it was a very simple system for agents to literally get to the next step. So a lot of brokers and owners will use back agent for that. So I'll just put my task in here for like, there's one in here for back agent somewhere, uh, like save and execute an amendment to back agent um, or update back agent and, um, you know, send out a CDA that's in my pending phase. There is ways that you can't integrate with open to close and real scale. I have both because I'm trialing both systems. Um, so that will probably be a webinar in itself uh, once I get that up and running. So I was uh, trialing real scale, which used to be Transactify and they're great. They're Austin based, Texas people love them. And you can create a new transaction directly from here. So if you don't wanna do the manual part of the custom fields, that's great. Uh, with these systems, they are a little bit more costly. I forgot the price of what RealScale is today, um, but you can hire a transaction coordinator from RealScale. So they're real people, they're based in the US, they do all 50 states. Um, so you can either have the transaction management platform, their software, or you can hire a transaction coordinator through their company that uses Transactify or real scale, sorry. Um, and it'll all be here saved for you. So I'll give you an example when we were trialing real scale. This is a real life client of ours. And what they did is they created it down here. It 
it was down here, <laughs> sorry, but it will show up here in your transactions. You basically click a link and it'll open up the software so you can log in and you can just do your checklist from there. Uh, benefits of using follow-up boss is you just don't have to pay for another system. Um, it is a little bit more manual work. It's not automated. Uh, open to close is also fantastic. Um, it just takes a very long time to get you set up um, because it is manual. You do need to know a little bit of how everything connects with each other. So even a systems person for me who's been doing this for nine years, it's been a little tedious to get that uh, up and running. There are consultants that will help you get up and running with open to close and they can walk you through those phases, um, but it just takes a long time to set up. So we're not completely there yet, but we're trialing uh, open to close right now to see if that's something that we wanna move forward with. But I like the control as well as the transaction coordinate where all my files are. So that's why I choose Follow Boss as my main transaction management. I love it. I think you've done a great job. And I think you solve a problem for a lot of agents out there who have one system and, and can't, can't afford to spend more money on a TC system. Right. So right. that this, I think is, is really good. Me starting off as a real estate agent, I would have loved to do this hands down because then I just transfer this over to my TC and be like, please just work on this. The only challenge I'm going to find Lisa is actually finding the time or making the time, forcing myself to be able to do this because I have to create those processes, right? Yeah, I definitely agree. Uh, this is where a virtual assistant, again, would be very helpful. Um, I was helping a couple people with their custom follow boss drip campaigns and things like that. I work a lot with Elena. So she refers me to people and I refer people back to her. Elena's um, awesome. I know. Yeah, I love Elena. So shout out to her. But um, yeah, I don't know of anyone who's doing any customized plans, but I say definitely this is something that you want to know how to do just in case you need to make changes in your operations and process later on. So having that virtual assistant, having them record the standard operating procedures, how they built it, how they set it up, how they have uh, where everything's going. Uh, you can have these as automated as you would like to like um, I have one here for a loan status update. I usually get from my lender every week um, a status update. So I'll just go in here, plug in their email address. And let me see. Oh, it's got my other email template. So um, basically you could have that automated instead of manually sending it out like I do. Yeah. Um, you could just put it in as an action plan, which is what I have. It just sends me a task to reminder, you know, like every week to do it, but you could just have it set it and forget it and it will be sent out for you. Um, I like a little bit more control because sometimes I forget to check my automated emails, but yep. yeah, having a virtual assistant do that for you in the very beginning is going to be a time saver and completely worth your time. I'd love to see, oh yeah, virtual assistant. If anybody's looking in, go to virtual desk, we'll put up the link there, but uh with what you're doing now with open to close, once you get there, I would love to have you back and see, okay, how does the integration look? What did you keep? What did you let go of and let open to close take over? I would love to see that. Yeah, I definitely love to be back. And that is my commitment for December is to trial more of open to close, get that set up, get that going. Um, we have a whole transaction coordinator Facebook group just for open to close. And Andrew Altman um, is very helpful. He's been doing right now. I just saw this morning, you have a trial. This is not promoted by any chance, but uh, I saw this morning that they're doing not just a, I think, 15 day trial anymore. It's 15 transactions. So if you've got 15 deals and you really want to dive in and give them a try, I mean, I think it's a great opportunity to try it. Um, but I would say set aside about 30 to 40 hours to set up your open to close so it can integrate with your follow-up boss as well. That's a long, that's a big commitment right there that you said that. That's that's really important that you that people understand that it takes a long time to set up. But once it's in, it's in place. So pay attention to that. This is recorded too. So it'll go on the Follow Up Boss YouTube channel. Lisa, if people want to hire you, are, are you are you for hire? How does that even work? Uh, not right now. I am considering hiring more virtual assistants to help me with that part of things. But if you are interested, I'm always happy to help. I may not be able to jump in and actually help you with creating your follow up boss, but um, I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. So you can find me at Lisa at simplyclose.house. Um, and I'll also give you my cell phone number if you want to text me. I may regret this later, but 
475-2489. All right, let's, uh, I'm gonna post it up here, just in case if anybody missed it. And then Lisa, I'm gonna be texting you as well. So <laughs> uh, thanks for being on Lisa, I appreciate you. This was really awesome. It just gives us a, a better idea as to what else is possible with Follow Up Boss, because I don't think even people using it at a high level, they don't fully understand that it has other capacities. So this was really, really good. Thank you for Thank this. You. You're welcome. And also Intergromat, it's very great. I'm trying it out versus Zapier. If I'm using Airtable for my reporting, so based off of deals, you can create those deals and actually automate that over to Airtable if you're using that for reporting. Perfect. I like that. I already took some notes on the, on the side. So thank you so much. You rocked it. I just texted you too. So say hi when you get a chance. Thank you, everybody. Lisa yeah. Bo, this is recorded. Have an awesome day. Thank y'all.